Okay, it is two days before Chemistry A-Level Paper 1, 2024. So once again, I'm really scared. I hate being on camera, but I'm going to be on camera just to answer a few questions that I'm being asked a lot by students at the moment, just as people are doing the predicted papers, doing their revision, asking me some questions about chemistry exams, really, and A-level exams that I'm getting asked quite a lot. So there's a few that we're going to go through, six what I call frequently asked questions. So one, you've probably seen it already, it comments on videos, how accurate are my predicted papers? So this is the second year that um, I have done this. So, you know, as a scientist, I don't have a huge amount of data to go on. But what I can tell you is that some of the questions for both AQA and OCR have been very similar to what came up in the actual exams. Some have been different. Um, I do take a massive amount of care in trying to get it to be like the style, the format, the sort of visual look, but also the type of questions, the wording used. I'm very perfectionist, quite ainly retentive in that respect. So most of the time I'm like scrutinizing, checking, oh, is this, that this is how they ask it in this syllabus and this is how they show like the little marks and this is how they would put it afterwards. So basically um, I work really hard to make it very accurate. Sometimes I predict things that are in paper one and then they end up in paper three or um, something end up in paper two, paper three swapping round because obviously you can't tell what order things are going to come up in an exam syllabus in terms of all the different topics. Some things are very predictable, some not so much. So I guess my real response to that is why are you doing a predicted paper, right? Are you panicking thinking, I just need to know what's going to be on the exam? This is not a leaked paper, right? This is a practice paper. This is a way for you to do a genuinely unseen paper because actually it's really hard for you to get unseen questions that also match your specification that also aren't going to like waylay you with weird things that you don't need to know. So that's the real purpose. You've probably done all the questions on physics and maths tutor. You've seen last year's papers in your mock exams. So this is a chance to do a full exam that you haven't seen before um, to give you good practice um, as part of full revision, right? So no one should be using anybody's predicted papers from any website like two hours before the exam to go, right, this is what's going to be on the exam. That's not how this should be used. They're part of your revision. OK, so following on from that, I've done videos on paper one and paper two and topics that I do think you should focus on. And I've now been asked, um, have you got paper three? So. Number one, very good in your forward thinking. As I just mentioned, some things that I predict in paper three will turn up in paper one or paper two or vice versa. So if you've got time, I recommend that you do all three papers um, if you're doing predictive papers and practice papers before the first exam. That doesn't mean you'll get through all of the paper three, but... Um, obviously, I have made a predicted paper three for each exam board. I haven't made a YouTube video for paper three yet because I'm at least going to wait and see what turns up in paper one, especially in terms of, say, calculation. So, for example, if um, KC turns up in paper one, KC calculations, it's unlikely to turn up again in paper three, but maybe there will be a KP or a big KA type question. So. Yes, I've written predicted papers for paper three and they're um, going to be very helpful because it's a very different style of paper to paper one and two. Um, but I'm not going to do the videos until I've got a little bit more gen on what comes up. OK, next question. This is a, a year on year question. Are A-level exams, in particular A-level chemistry, because that's what they teach, are they getting harder? So this is quite difficult to answer. I certainly don't think they're getting easier. So those sort of weird uh, news thing articles that come out every flipping results day when you've worked so hard and you get results and there's always someone saying, oh, they're much easier than they used to be and everybody's getting an A. Well, maybe everyone is getting an A, but actually like 
everyone needs an A to go to uni now. So it's very different from when I went to uni or people older than me. So I think the truth is that your A-level exam is going to be your hardest one, right? It's going to be harder than your mock. It's going to be harder than the practice papers that you've done. It's going to, because it's the real thing. The stakes are higher. Um, you are going to be completely unseen questions. And so with that whole idea of the unseen questions and questions you've not seen before, examiners are trying really hard to make up questions that students can't predict or teachers for that matter um, because basically they can't just keep asking the same thing in the same way every single year like we're now in year eight of this specification that means that um, you're just going to be able to basically learn all the mark schemes and not be tested on your application so they do try and do unfamiliar contexts, new different things. Um, and so in every exam, there should be some there will be some easy questions and basic stuff. And then there will be sometimes some really ridiculous ones. And sometimes examiners get it wrong and it's too ridiculous, you know, and a teacher would look at it and go, what? Like, you know, why would you just make this so complicated? Those types of questions, they happen every year. And those are the ones that you're going to remember, right? You're not going to remember the one right at the start where it asks you to fill in the relative charge and relative mass of a proton and a neutron. You're going to remember that, you know, 15 step titration at the end. So those are the most memorable things. And the thing to remember, therefore, is that we've got grade boundaries for a reason. Um, and I'm going to talk about grade boundaries in this video, as you might have noticed. Um, if a student, if everybody's finding it really hard and if a question's really inaccessible, they have to adjust the grade boundaries to account for that. Okay, so this leads on perfectly to the next question, I guess. If you've been doing the predictive papers, you might be wondering, are they harder, are the ones that I write like, are they harder than the real exam, do I think? Or are they meant to be about the same? So um, I would say I've got better at this. So this year's are better than last year. I do like to write a hard question. I'm known for it. OK, um, so I do write challenging predictive papers. I'm not going to shy away from that um, because it is the trend that I am seeing. And I want students to be well prepared. So I think it's better to try those more challenging questions in a safer environment where you've got the mark scheme, where you've got um, walkthrough videos to explain it if you need a little bit extra. Um, and then find that the exam is not as bad as you thought. I'd rather it be that way around. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, that frustrates me because actually I see other predicted papers that are easier <laughs> and I get great reviews, but I look at them and sometimes think, but they're not as close to what the real thing is gonna be. So I think we can't shy away from the fact that the real exam will be hard. Um, so treat it like that. It is a practice paper. It is there to inform you. Some things you should just know and some things will be challenging questions. If you're feeling anxious, because questions are hard as you're doing either predictive papers or practice papers just take a break from it try going back to just doing because anything helps with revision except for doing nothing or panicking so go back to retrieval practice quizzes or my 101 a level activities 101 as level activities do as papers like just to because they break things down a little bit more for you especially with calculations do some AS paper ones, get some calculations in that way. Just something, flashcards, Quizlet, something to focus on um, that is like distraction, but also revision, right? So not scrolling, not moaning on student room about how hard it all is, um, still productive, still revising, but don't push yourself into panic zone, okay? Because obviously that's not productive. So if my exams are hard, 
do I have great boundaries? Uh, no. I started doing it, I think, when I first put out predictive papers. And then I just thought it's very artificial thing to do. Grade boundaries are devised by exam boards only after the whole student cohort has sat the exam and they've marked it. And by that time, they've also like, you know, thought of loads of things in the questions that they hadn't thought of before. And they put like little commentary in and all the extra stuff on the mark scheme. So they decide how many A stars they're going to give and how many A's. And they decide where that grade goes after the exam. So I'd only be guessing. I'd be putting on an average. You could kind of do that yourself, right? So you could kind of go, oh, well, you know, 85 for an A, 85% for an A star and like 75 for an A. You could just make that up, right? Just go down 10% each time. Um, and also COVID has really messed with our grade boundaries. They've been all over the place, not only because of the lowered grade, ba grade boundaries in recent years, but also because of there were a couple of years where if you're looking at grade boundaries for 2020, 2021, uh, hardly any students sat any exams in those years. So they've got very little data to go on. Uh, the only people that would have done some of those papers would have been the ones that weren't happy with the grades they got from their teachers. So they were the ones that were like having to do them after the event, like in the autumn. So they're not easy to interpret. If you're asking about grade boundaries, I also, I guess I want to know why. Why do you, what's the purpose for that? How is that helping your revision? Is it helpful to know how close you got to an A grade? Because if you got an A in a practice paper that you were doing, are you just going to like, oh, that's that. I'm not going to do any more. I mean, the questions might be different, right? <laughs> um, if you didn't get the A, what are you going to do? Just go give up or you just going to, carry on either way the outcome of whatever you do in the paper is you look at the things you got wrong and you work on those you don't need a grade boundary to do that um just focus on what you know well and what you need to improve that's what you get out of it and in fact that's going to be my last point so sometimes if i'm giving a group class or i'm just helping a student i just get this feedback of I feel like I'm going to fail. What am I going to do? Chemistry is really hard. Um, this is a really emotional time for students. It's quite an emotional time for teachers and tutors too. Um, everyone has their own definition of fail. So some people literally mean get a U. Some people mean getting a C. When I was at school, getting a C would have been a fail for me. I was very much a perfectionist. Um, I'm very glad, actually, that there wasn't an A star grade at A level when I took my A levels, because <laughs> if I didn't get them, I would have been absolutely just so upset. So the thing is, is that whatever the word fail means to you, I can't guarantee to you that that won't happen. Nobody can. Um, all I can say is that chemistry is a really difficult a level you should be proud of yourself for making it this far if you're about to take the exam because lots of people wouldn't even dream of doing a level chemistry and you might be thinking oh, i wish i hadn't now um and lots of people wouldn't have got this far okay loads of students drop out in the first year so you've got this far you're going to have to give it a shot. Whatever happens, happens on the day. If it doesn't work out for you, then what I can, I think, genuinely promise, having been through an awful lot of weird things in my life that I wasn't expecting, is that something will work out for you. OK, so you're going to go on in there, do your best because my positive potato believes in you my sister gave me this okay so if I can put my face on YouTube because I, I really hate putting my face on YouTube you can go in there and face paper one on Monday or whichever paper you are about to face and I hope that's answered some questions if you've got any more put them in the comments <laughs>